Welcome to Marga Show. Our guest today, Elena Lam, and her son, Nikolai Lam. Elena Lam, she's an artist, she's an illustrator, and she's a graphic designer. And her art is absolutely beautiful. She is doing, look at this flower. This is so beautiful color, beautiful. And this, actually, this bouquet from her garden. OK, Lena, tell us a little bit about your technique, about your paintings, uh, about your textile, that you're doing scarves, I know, and you're doing dresses. OK, tell us about yourself, please. OK. Hello, everybody. Margot, thank you very much for having us here. Uh, to talk about my art, I started doing art a long, long time ago, actually, in early childhood. I love painting flowers. I love painting still lives. I do paint other subjects as well. I do paint people, portraits. I can do landscape. So it really depends as long as it's like bright, beautiful, full of, full of life, full of colors. That's my subject. So I'm trying to find beauty in oh. everyday life around us. Yeah, this is an example of um, not exactly a portrait. I would say figurative painting. This is a real portrait from, from somebody? It's, it's, or it's this actually is started as a, uh, as a work in the studio, uh, working from a life model. It was mm -hmm. a three-hour session. And then I just finished this painting in my studio. I love the color. Thank you very All much. All this pastel. And the door is beautiful. Thank you. This is a scene. Uh, this is a very, uh, you know, traditionally classic view of my city now. It's Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so really yes, nice. yes, this is the Point Three really River nice. the building. It's a little stylized. Oh, this is oh, another. Oh yes, that's another flower composition. And uh, what can I say? I like to uh, stylize things a little bit, not too much. So it's pretty much realism. I call it realism with a mm -hmm. little twist. So I add twist. some geometry. I break down the shapes, play with the colors, with lines. To I don't know. Beautiful. I'm, you I'm having fun with it. <laughs> so hopefully you combine you also. beautiful colors. This red and this green and yellow. And it looks fantastic. It just looks great. Uh, it's just your paintings. How big is in, in size? You, how big sizes you're doing? You're doing small, you're doing um, medium? Looks I would like say medium. Yeah, like, because like this particular one is 24 by 24 inches. So it's kind of Because I saw you big sizes and it looks fantastic. So where you exhibit this? Where you exhibit your beautiful paintings? I do exhibit in Pittsburgh. I take part in uh, pretty much all the local art festivals, art mm -hmm. shows. Mm -hmm. uh, a large art festival in Pittsburgh is Three Rivers Art Festival. It's, um, it usually happens, it always happens in first part of June. Mm -hmm. So it's a 10 day art show with many people coming. Um, and that's actually how I started making textiles. Because at some point, way too many people were looking at my works and were like, oh, I wish I could wear this. Like, well, okay, if people want to wear it, I need to make something Very nice. wearable. Very nice. Well, so I turned online, I found a website, found an online business uh, where you can order custom printed fabric. Mm -hmm. They have different kind of fabric. You can order um, small quantities. You don't have to order a ton. You can mm -hmm. order a yard or two yards, as many mm -hmm. as you need. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I uh, prepare my, uh, my files art files for them. I design it so the image will, you know, fit in the format of a scarf, like a few scarves here, all based on my paintings, from my paintings and designed by me. So I received the fabric in the yard that I cut it and sewed. That's another hobby. Mm. So tell us, tell me, how do you like International Art Festival where you participate? That was my art festival. <laughs> so, and you b brought your beautiful paintings. Tell us what is your opinion about this. And uh, just tell us what you think. How you feel about this? Wonderfully, it was fabulous. I had uh, exhibited at Margot's Art Festival on two occasions. Uh, Huge crowds, very positive, uh, 
many people, uh, you know, I like a positive atmosphere. And that's exactly what happened there. Yeah, and also you're exhibiting in a uh, Museum of Russian Art. Yes, right now my paintings are right, exhibited right. there. Beautiful, big paintings with beautiful images of beautiful girls. <laughs> yes, yes, my and figures of paintings what are there. About this, this is Nikolai creative, what he's doing, he's doing dolls, and you're doing the, this, uh, this is your images? On yes, this? the artwork on the packaging is all mine. So yes, this is my son, that's his business, the Lemily doll company, this is Nikolai's business. How I help him, I, that's a combination of, I guess, my skills as an artist, illustrator, and graphic designer, because I mm -hmm. created images and also designed all packaging for mm -hmm. All the dolls he's doing. So here we go. There's the doll, oh. but Nikolai will tell uh, Nikolai will tell more about the dolls. I will tell more about okay, the Okay, tell us a little bit now about your doll. Okay. Talk oh, about so, the dolls. so you're probably wondering like, you know, what's a guy doing, you know, with dolls? Well, so I was shopping for a doll for a niece of mine in 2013. And you know, show this. Yeah, so, we're so, so beautiful. So I was shopping for. I'm gonna, you know, tell how you know how it was all founded. So I was shopping for a doll for a niece of mine in Target in 2013, and then I was wondering, you know, Bar Barbie has been criticized a lot, like she's unrealistic. So I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. it's 2013. Surely it can't be that hard to make a doll with realistic body proportions. Mm -hmm. So then I did a Kickstarter or a crowdfunding for a realistically proportioned fashion doll. It went really well over, we got over 20,000 pre-orders, so mm -hmm. 500,000 in pre-orders. Um, and so now let that- Let me see, let yeah. me see this doll. And then we got the oh, money to make this doll a so reality. Great, okay. An alternative uh -huh. to Barbie. So what is so special about this? As they, they, you're selling this? Yeah, we sold 50,000 of oh, them so 50, far. 50,000? Actually, in total, about like close, closer to like 80,000 with all of the 80, dolls. 80,000. So this is a real big business. I mean, it's oh. not small, it's not big. It's no, this is great business. Why are you doing this? In your studio, you have a studio, you have a special place. Oh, so, I mean, the dolls are manufactured in China. Uh -huh. And I know people are like, oh, China, terrible. but. You know, bottom line, it's impossible to manufacture in the right. U.S. because right, of, right, of the right, cost right, here. Right. And the the way these dolls are made, it's like it's basically like, for example, this doll here. Um, it can also move its knees, its ah, elbows, yeah. its hair is ah, super like soft. Ah. Yeah, so it's kind of like an action figure. We really wanted to focus on what the doll does instead uh -huh. of what the doll looks like. Mm -hmm. And so, so basically. What makes this special is that it's, um, and I know I'm biased, but it's the most realistic, the most realistic fashion doll you can get. Um, and and it, who is doing dresses for your doll? Oh, so it's like a, it's kind of like a collaborative effort between me, my mom, and like a couple other oh, people. Oh boy, I would like to have this kind of dress for myself. Oh, <laughs> oh. Like, she gets many more outfits. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we don't you have may, them here, but there are like many more outfits. This is our. One of our newer dolls, you may like her outfit a little better. It's kind of colorful. Mm. It is colorful, yes, mm. I love this outfit. So, where are you selling this? Oh, it's, it's Online? only... Online? Yeah. Or are you selling this, you have a store, you have a special place in Pittsburgh where you're selling? How people can find it? Oh, you it's, advertise? So, it's all online. Um, you know, some people are like, oh, you need a, when is it coming on toy shelves? And I'm like, oh, never, because, you know, retail is kind of dying let me see this girl. off. So it's all online at lamily.com. Mm, nice shoes. Oh, boy. So they're really special because I never look at the doll, but they're special. This is different from yeah. another doll that's selling in the store. Yeah, because, so it's an, actually an interesting story. So when we re released um, this doll, this particular doll in 2014, there was nothing like it on the market. This was the only realistically proportioned fashion doll. And then Mattel came out with a competing product in 2016. Uh, they made curvy, tall, and petite Barbie. And Time Magazine, they said that Lamely it helped influence their decision. So in effect, um, all the people who pre-ordered this doll, 
they helped influence the, a $3 billion industry. So, and, Unbelievable. And, and even though Mattel made a competing product, uh, you know, they still, they released Curvy. So they used to have original Barbie, not realistic at all. So now they have Curvy, Tall and Petite Barbie, a great effort. And I like what they did, but it's still very stylized in the proportions. But this is made according to the average proportions of the average 19-year-old American woman. So it's pretty much as close as you can as close as you can get to a human person. We have to go to the break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. We, we're back. We're back. We, we continue <laughs> conversation with our guest. One is uh, Elena Lam, and another one is Nikolai Lam, and he's going to tell us about all, all and other things about these dolls, about what else he is doing. Oh, okay. So, so this kind of you know, I think just looking at this doll, it's kind of hard to see, but if you can compare her to Barbie, she's looks. I'm very much like you know, like your sister, your aunt, your mom, and also another really cool thing: the doll has an optional accessory pack. So you can um, it consists of reusable stickers, so the doll can have acne, cellulite, stretch marks, <laughs> uh, even grass stains, <laughs> uh, moles. And pretty soon we're gonna come out with with an accessory, so she can have a lot of wrinkles. So like she's aging, because there's not really a doll out there where <laughs> like, a, like an older doll. So it's kind of, it's to show that these things like like stretch marks, cellulite, wrinkles, it's all just a natural part of life and that, um, you know, rather than being like ashamed of those things, it's something I think maybe we should be proud of. Oh, I don't know who likes the doll with the wrinkles. <laughs> uh, Are you sure that they're going to buy dolls with the wrinkles, or they prefer the beautiful dolls without wrinkles? <laughs> well, I think it depends on, because, you know, number one, like a lot of grandparents actually buy dolls, and they oh, don't. Grandparents, yeah, okay. Yeah, like collectors, grandparents, and also kids, they, they often, um, and, and grandparents also buy it for their kids, and I think grandparents would kind of want it, um, you know, there's also a lot of ageism in society. And I think uh, a doll with wrinkles can show that, you know, having wrinkles isn't such a bad thing after all. Oh. And it can be, it's fun. Good can, idea, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> a good idea. <laughs> you can take the wrinkles on and off. So it's, I think, kind of like a fun accessory as well. Hmm. <laughs> mm. Okay, so what else are you doing? So this is funny. 
This is funny. Are you sure that people are going to buy their if on a shelf? One is beautiful, beautiful doll, and another one with wrinkle, whatever. So which one they prefer? I would prefer the most beautiful one. <laughs> well, well, I think I think um, we actually did a video of kids reacting oh, really? to this doll to Barbie, and all the kids, you know, uh, and the 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 video I released got like. Now it has about four million views on YouTube. It was on CNN, ABC, mm. everywhere in 2014, and the the kids absolutely loved this doll. So it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, you have Barbie who's very um, kind of idealistic, kind of like a supermodel, kind of like up there, and this is kind of more of like the relatable doll. Mm. And so you're a big businessman. I wouldn't say so. I mean, I'm a, I would say so. I think anyone who you thinks... You advertise on CNN and everywhere, right? No, I you mean, it was just in the news, but it's just like, you know, it's, just, it's kind of, like, it was a big kind of viral sensation in 2014. And so, you know, it's been in the news after that, too. But I think at the end of the day, if anybody who considers themselves a big businessman or anything like that, that's the beginning of the end. Okay, you're fantastic. You're unbelievable. <laughs> our, and our mom, and my mom, she, you know, without my mom, there's no way these dolls would happen because she helped on designing all these dolls. And number two, she did all the packaging. Packaging. Show this packaging. This is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Beautiful packaging. Now you show it to the camera. Here. I can show it. I, okay, if you unfold it, okay, you hold this. Unfold it like this. Mm -hmm. That's my original watercolor. So mm -hmm. I made this watercolor also inside the box. Here's mm -hmm. another part of this garden. So the idea was this uh, this is an original edition of Le Mille. So the doll, she's a traveler. She, you know, traveled through different countries and finally came home mm. to you or to you, anybody, anyone who mm. bought her, and so just the doll, so it's her <laughs> new home, and she's there, she's home with her new friends, new family. Anyways, but yes, my original mm. what watercolors, that? this was the second edition, um, a little different, that's a photographer doll, and she, hold on the brochure, she walks, she walks the streets of the city, Mm -hmm. A kind of European looking city, and she's oh, taking nice. photographs. <laughs> and yes, and there is a whole story about her in this yeah. booklet. Ah. Actually, yes, the booklet ah. that comes with the doll. It has a story, and the story is ah. about the old, yeah, story. old camera. So it's how this girl found an old camera. It's, I guess her friend's trunk or something. The moving process. Uh -huh. Anyways, so she found this camera and she decided to uh, keep it and try to take a picture with an old-fashioned camera. She learned how to use it. At first, it didn't work out. So she looked at her, started looking through her photos, she didn't like them, and she was a little frustrated. But then she finally saw the picture, which was amazing. And so, it, anyways, and uh, she became a photojournalist and was taking pictures of different people, <laughs> taking interviews. So that's how I it defined this. her future. I love picture. this. What about another story about some another girl? Mm. Yeah, oh, the first one? Yeah, the, the traveler one. Yes, that's the first, the original one. So that's mostly about traveling through different countries. So uh, actually, for the second one, I did digital illustrations. Uh -huh. But these are watercolors. And that's also the story of the girl traveling different countries. So she was trying um, and trying new things. She was trying ice skating in Canada. She was um, talking to, you know, to a shepherd to, yeah, in Australia. Uh, bakery in France. <laughs> uh, she was fun. biking in New York that and really helped fun. a boy to fix <laughs> his bike. And she was like under the rain in London. So that's all about her travels. And what so, about oh. the, the animal rescue? Animal though? rescue, that's the newest, Nicholas. Yes, that's the newest edition. That's the f uh, latest doll he created. And it's a boy doll. 
Oh, yeah, okay. because we have two girls and we have a so boy. He girl. has no six pack or anything. Yes, and he's a realistically proportioned man. Because let's show him. Let's show the them the belly. Okay, you can show the doll. I can show. I, I'm, I'm in the packaging part oh, yes. here. Okay. 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 You, you want to talk about the doll? Show oh, the doll. Oh boy! No, wait, show the. No, come on. No, you're showing the doll. Oh. <laughs> yes. Let's talk about the Look doll. Look at this guy. Yeah, he's oh. like just normal guy. Very nice. Okay. Here, tell us about this guy. How you come up with this guy? No, so. So this doll was, I believe, released in 2015 or early 2016. So this is the first realistically proportioned boy doll. He's made according to the proportions of the average 19-year-old American man. Uh -huh. So as you can see, so we actually used a 3D model. Um, so they got about like a thousand 19-year-old men and then meshed it into one 3D model, like the average of all those models. And then we used that model to create this doll. So this is scientifically, uh, like, you know, just an average man. And I think, you know, when you look at him, um, he's not, like, intimidating. He doesn't have a lot of muscles. He doesn't have a six-pack. He kind of just shows, like, you know, you can be cool, and you don't need a six-pack or bulging muscles or anything like that. Mm, very interesting. So you design this uh, clothes for this guy? Who designed clothes <coughs> for the guy? Um, I, I, the clothes, you know, were... I'm sorry, we have to go to the break. We're going to be right back. Okay, we're back, and our guest tonight, this is Margo Shaw, and our guest tonight is Elena Lam and her son, Nikolai Lam. And he's going now to tell us, his, we continue conversation about these beautiful dolls that he's creating, and he's going, what, what, another, what is your future ideas about particular dolls or something else? Yeah, so. So number one, actually a product which isn't here is a wheelchair. So, wheelchair? Yeah, so right now it's the only fashion doll sized wheelchair. In other words, like Barbie, Monster High. So it's a wheelchair which fits Lamley dolls, Barbie dolls, Monster High dolls, and it's the only wheelchair you can get anywhere for these type of 11 inch <laughs> dolls. This is fun. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's just, it's a fun like Lego like accessory. You can make a wheelchair. And in terms of the future, um, you know, I was thinking, number one, um, number one, he may have, like, you know, some kind of hair recession, like he's balding a little. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we're going to have, um, so, you know, like, some stickers, so it looks like he's balding, you know. A lot of 
a lot of men are boating these days apparently and, and you think that this is this is okay for the doll and people like it <laughs> i think you know it's like a fun thing because if you know a lot of daughters their, their fathers are probably uh, very likely ha are losing their hair so why can't the doll lose the, its hair <laughs> so some more days some more interesting ideas yeah and also so another thing that we're gonna do are um, shelter pets so toys for these type of size dolls which represent black cats pit bulls um, older dogs basically animals which are often put down in shelters and every time you get one of these toys a percentage is donated to a real shelter mm. <laughs> You're unbelievable. Okay, Lena, what is your ideas for the future? What are you going to create? What are you going to paint? More and painting. where are you going to exhibit S shortly, soon? Uh, right now I have a large show happening in Somerset, Pennsylvania. I will continue exhibiting locally. I will continue exhibiting with you, Margot, and hope you will keep inviting me Absolutely. to your festival and to the Museum of Russian Art a fabulous place in Jersey City. I will just keep painting, creating, bringing up more colors and more interesting, beautiful subjects. And what about textile? Just scarf and dresses or something else? Uh, it's in the works, maybe, maybe. Since it's not my, like, you know, major, I would say, direction. I'm not a fashion, I'm, I'm not a fashion designer. It's okay, more I like, you know, to exhibit my paintings. Unfortunately, our time is off, but please come back next week. This is Margot Show.